In this episode of Another Zelda Podcast, David and Dan get together to read some questions and comments from the listeners. Hello and welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am David Geisler and today I am joined yet again with Mr. Dan McCoy. Dan, how are you? Hello everyone. It's nice to be back again. Yes, new setting. I hope it's not too echoey in here. I don't think it is. It's a little echoey, but I think we're okay. It's very nice. It's very, very nice. I dig it. I like it a lot. Um, So, Dan. Yes. Today, what are we doing? So today, I'm actually pretty honored to be part of this. Um, I wasn't here for the first one, but today we are doing, drum roll please, as we move into listener feedback. I'm super, super excited about that it. That was my symbol. That was good. I liked it. Yeah. I like to do more of a rolling symbol. It sounds like, it sounds like a breeze. It Shoot, was like you're a, right. Now, that's definitely a breeze. Was Pretty that supposed sure to be, that's a symbol. That's, oh, I know. I think we're just, <laughs> no, I, I think we're getting further away from the symbol. Oh, like one of those, you know, mouth symbols. Oh, that's good. Like, yeah. It's gotta be. I can't do it. Ah. I'm no good at it. Uh, how about <laughs> how about a sound a sound effect? We were talking before we started recording. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. This we are doing a our second listener feedback episode. It's true, Dan. You were able to join me here in the studio. Uh, we are at an appropriate distance. And um, let's see, we are doing listener feedback because due to our current state of times. I had to cancel two other episodes. Womp womp. I know, I know. It's the truth. It's what it is the case. It's other, gonna be the sound there. Other guest co-hosts. Um, you and I work together. You and I are in the same biological sphere daily. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do practice social distancing. Nevertheless, we felt comfortable recording this episode. Though our other guests, it's responsible to have them not be a part of it yet. So yep. there it is. We're doing listener feedback, and I'm excited because I. I, I made a plan this season that we were going to do a little less listener feedback at the top of each episode, Mm -hmm. maybe just four or five things, and then do more listener feedback full episodes. So this is the first of this season. And uh, I realized, I didn't know what to call it. I said, wait, we called the last one, Hey Listen. (laughs) And what were some of your ideas? Well, I mean, there's... uh, Because it's a sequel episode almost. Yeah, so there was Hey Listen, uh, The Listener Strikes Back. Yeah. I thought was a good one. I like Hey Listen again. Hey Listener, Hey Listen More. No, none of those work. Um, hey, listen to the hey listening. Um, the hey know, listening is not bad. I, th- I like that one. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> the hey listening. <laughs> I just hey listening. Hey. Yeah. All right. Not do you bad. want to get, get started? In. So when I did this with Kate last season, uh, we we had a shared file, a shared album, which you and I both have right now. You have it on your iPhone. I have it over here on my iPad. Um, we have about forty submissions here that I, I collected. Awesome. We actually get love them all on, on Twitter. We get. A lot of chatter. It's it's a, it's an absolute pleasure and a gift to have people talk so much, uh, uh, and there's a lot of conversations that happen. There's a lot of replies. Mm-hmm. Today I chose tweets that were kind of just m- maybe one and dones, like single yeah. statements. Yep. But we have iTunes reviews on here. We have YouTube comments. We have Twitter, and that's the brunt of it. There's a lot of chatter that happens on Discord and also on Facebook and and even Instagram. But I'm saving those three for another episode down the line. Absolutely. Cool. Very cool. So let's get in. Actually, this one is actually, we could start right off the bat with a, a comment on Patreon. There we go. And this was from a gentleman named Adam Love, and he sent us a message when he subscribed. Um, if you're interested in our Patreon account, you can go to our website, anotherzeldapodcast.com, where we have a link that goes to patreon.com slash anotherzeldapodcast. You could also just go to that URL, I just there realized. We go. Um, and we uh, have three tiers. The final tier is one, one wherein we allow people to watch us. And we have some Magical Sword people watching us. Magical Sword people from the Magical Sword tier mm-hmm. watching us right now. Hey, everybody. How are you? And uh, Adam here, I don't quite recall which tier he entered. Nevertheless, I'm super grateful. And he said, hey, you two. Uh, been listening to your podcast for a while now. Figured it was time to formally thank you all for your great work. I was listening to your Skyward Sword music episode for the second time, as I am a big soundtrack and music lover, and got inspired to dive deeper into all the great music and soundtrack in, tracks in the series. Can't wait for your next music episode, as you two struck a nice balance between playing snippets of the songs, but also adding your own insight and commentary. Great segment to continue for sure. Keep up the great work. That's yes. awesome. Yeah, we almost 
recorded a music episode today. We were spitballing it a yeah, little bit. It was discussed for a little bit. We thought about doing the music of Ocarina of Time. And then? And then like I had a weird scratch in my brain, and I was like, I really feel like we did this already. A deja vu yeah. scream in the back of your head. And sure enough, of course, Kate and I already did a music of Ocarina episode. Which, when he came to me and said he wanted to do that, I was surprised that you hadn't done it already. I mean... And, and of course we had. That's the one thing that I kind of will always take away from Ocarina of Time was, I mean, and I was talking to David about this earlier, I still have the Epona song. I think about it at least once a week. What? Like, I just, I don't know, just... Na, na, na. Yeah. And it's just, it's so peaceful and like tranquil that if I'm ever stressed, I'm like, just calm down. <laughs> and like, and just that image of her like swaying just slightly when she's yeah. doing it. Oh, love it. Um... Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. The Epona song. My, f- I don't know if the Epona song shows up in Breath of the Wild at all. A lot of the songs are... Oh, no, it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. It's all the horse staples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all the time. Now, I don't want to go back. Out of yeah? all the times I've been here, mm-hmm. um, out of all the games we've talked about, I have to admit, I think Skyward, Sw- or Skyward Sword... Yes, Skyward the- Sword. Yes, yes, the Skyward Sword. Um, I, kinda, I think that's the next game I kind of want to play. So I was thinking about this. Um, you're welcome to. Yeah. I have it as a disc. Do you own a Wii or a Wii U? I own a Wii, yes. You're fine with a Wii then. Sure, I, can, yeah. I can even give you a controller with the Motion Plus if you don't have one. You might yeah. have one. I have Skyward Sword on a disc, and I also have it downloaded virtual console to my Wii U. So if you and I were to were to do a review episode of Skyward Sword, um, just muting my watch here, I apologize. Um, if you and I were to do Skyward Sword, I could play it on the Wii U, and you could play it on your Wii. I could give you the disc. Yeah, yeah. And we could try it. It's just because, you know, it's what the origin of the sword and all this other stuff. And I just, I don't know. It just, the lore in it sounds pretty impressive. And I kind of want to. Lore wise, it's the beginning. And lore wise, it's very strong. Yeah. I want to dip my toes in it. I was thinking about Twilight Princess. The other day we were hanging out and I was playing Twilight Princess HD. Mm -hmm. And um, I I think it's okay where I'm going to go with this. It's okay. But if I may, you had said to me at the time, you're like, ooh, ooh, it feels weird. What did you say? I don't remember. Oh, really? Yeah. You were like, you're like, see, as I, I want to play Twilight Princess, but as I look at this, it looks just looks like a computer game from oh, the early yeah, 2000s. Oh, yeah, It really does. It was very, not pixelated, that's the wrong word, but just unnecessarily sharp at points, you know, and very, yeah. not blocky. I'm, there's an exact word I want to say. I think say. what you're getting at is that the lighting engine is le- less existent. Yeah, so there the, we go. all the shadows and that kind of ambient lighting that you start to get in, in newer titles mm-hmm. wasn't there yet. And you're absolutely right. Like a solid, crisp, yeah. really crisp HD it looks, computer game. I do. I, it looks like a computer game from the 2000s. That's, yeah. I remember that. Where there sense. isn't any real lighting being processed. It's all just like emulated lighting. Mm-hmm. You know, there isn't like any kind of tracing or anything happening. Yep. I think that's the difference. However, I was thinking about this, Dan. I do want you to play Twilight Princess eventually. And I think what I would do then is say, like, you must play the GameCube version, not the Wii U HD version. Okay. Because I I found I I always thought that the Wii U HD version looked a little weird too. Yeah. Um. I think that the Wind Waker HD version on Wii U. Uh, this is controversial, but I think it does look better than the GameCube version. I, okay. Or at least I prefer it. Sure. There's a little bit some aesthetic choices that were made where maybe it's a little less flat shaded at times. Okay. The 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 Wii U one, but I think it's beautiful and it's running a, a weird little light engine. Now, does Nintendo have any plans on ever porting these over to the Switch at all? Like, I know the Switch right now is so, like, online and all these other games are coming in. And I just, I don't know. I know. Who knows? I mean, that's the big, the big thing is people are deducing that Skyward Swords re- do for, yeah. a, for a remake. Uh, Wind Waker already got one. Twi- Twilight Princess got one. It'd be pretty easy to put both of those on the Switch. There might be a day where they just drop them. Okay. It'd be the exact same controls and everything because sure. it worked on the Wii U. Um, however... The reason I think you should play the GameCube version is, is that I was re- doing a little bit of research on HD Twilight Princess, and it's true that they have higher texture files on you know higher textures, higher res textures. Yeah. Um, the geometry of the pic- the polygons is all the same, but they completely removed their Bloom engine for the the Wii U HD remake. So when you play the GameCube version, things are syrup. Things are glowy and goopy and sparkly, and it's like you're constantly looking into a sunset. Okay. And, it's, and I think it's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. And I, don't, I actually think that's one of those games where the lower resolution, with all of that those bloom effects running, it actually works really well. I think it's actually beautiful. I actually think that the HD version is less beautiful. It might be a little cleaner. It might be a little sharper. It's nice to play with the new controls, and it's nice to play 16.9. The GameCube one, of course, yeah, is, yeah. is 4.3. 
but I actually still prefer the look of the GameCube one, or rather even the Wii one. You know, GameCube Wii was all the same. Yeah, so we'll have to just kind of flip a coin then, because they both have... I think I would enjoy Twilight Princess. Um, it seems to be right up the alley, because like I said, I've only yeah. played Ocarina of Time, open world, collected you know items, dungeons, all that other stuff. But something about Skyward Sword and just the lore, I think I would learn more about the universe yeah. in that one. Maybe so. it's Skyward Sword. I don't know. You will have to put up with all the motion controls. That's fine. At motion controls at their worst, not at their best. Oh, okay. Well, I was hoping they would be at their worst. <laughs> so you can really push through. Yeah, well, then I can blame the motion controls when I'm doing poorly. You There's know, a bit of that it's sometimes. not that I'm just bad at video games. It's like it's got to be the you know console's fault. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait to fall in love with Skyward Sword. I'm pretty excited. And I know I probably the least about it. Like at times That's I even forget that it's one of the games. It's maybe we do very have rarely talked about, I think, out of all of them. Boy, oh boy, maybe I do lend you the disc and that's one of our review episodes this season. I'm pretty excited. We'll see. Audience, uh, we didn't talk about this yet. Uh, audience, Dan is moving. You're moving out of I Chicago am. to St. Louis. Yes, yes. We're going back to the Lou. Back to the, uh, the one silver arch. Yes, yes, indeed. And... Um, I'm not too worried about it affecting another Zelda podcast. I will travel to you. You'll travel here. Oh, absolutely. Same I'll be back. Visiting you will be just like visiting Shane or visiting the Coons or mm-hmm. visiting... But Celeste is a little further away. <laughs> Celeste might include an, 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 uh, an airport. Sure. But um, otherwise, I don't think it's going to be that different. And also, we'll have you come up here absolutely. to record episodes, no problem. From going from Chicago to St. Louis, I think I'm going to do everything I can to come back to Chicago as much as possible. Yeah. I mean, we've been here for three years and not to jump ship, but I fell in love with the city. Um, so I yes. very much... I'm going to miss it, and I'm going to do everything I can to be back as much as possible. Indeed, indeed. Why don't you grab this next Patreon comment by Joseph Purvis over Okay, here. well, this next Patreon comment is by Joseph Purvis. Um, <laughs> he says, hey, guys, in reference to fighting Dark Link in Ocarina of Time, if you use the big Goron sword and thrust, you'll beat him easily. He can't jump on the bigger sword like the Master Sword. Uh, give it a try. Interesting. Ooh. No, it's funny. We all, we were actually talking about Dark Link a little bit at work today. We were thinking about putting together a Dark yeah, yeah. Link episode. And I think we should, but not today. Like, we need time to really build that episode out. Is it literally Big Goron Sword? The Big Goron Sword. Is it one word or is it Big Goron? It's one. Okay. But it's a play on words. Okay. It's it's the Big Goron Sword. Because I feel Big like I would have just been mispronouncing that my entire life. Big Goron, is it even calling it? Uh, yeah, I think it was Big Goron for the longest time. Yeah, no, it's it's Big Goron, Big Goron Sword. Big Goron Sword, got it. Anyways, yeah, cool, that's possible. Use the Big Goron Sword um, on Dark Link. Fun fact. In the Water Temple. He's the sub-boss for the Water I Temple. I remember walking into that area and going like, something's happening. That was single tree. Yeah, and you're just There's like no that walls. little thing, and you're just like, the, the floor's completely reflective, and you're like, oh, something's happening. <laughs> it's creepy. Oh, it's this, beautiful, yeah. and you're like, And oh. you're excited, but also terrified beyond all <laughs> rational doubt. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Cool. Let me uh, take that one off the list here, because there we go. Uh, okay, we've got a YouTube one for Water Dungeons. Wow, this goes right into Water Dungeons. Over on YouTube, uh, Michael Went. Uh, speaking to our episode 15 uh, of season two, Water Dungeons Live, where Kate and I met with Celeste and <laughs> Lizzie. Lizzie. Okay, I was just like, I don't, I don't know how I to help always you always forget here. Lizzie's name now. I'm so sorry, because I always want to say like Alyssa. I don't know. It's my dyslexia takes Lizzie mm. and turns it into a totally different thing. And Lizzie and Michael went here said, I've listened to every single episode of your show. Thanks for making my work day fly by. Very awesome. We'll take it. We'll take it. Um, we get a lot of that when people talk to us about when, when and where they listen to the show and the, either on drives. Or yeah, whatever. it's a lot of traveling, I've noticed, like on buses and all that kind of stuff. There's one YouTuber, Hyrule Gamer, who listens to us while he like works on the scripts and he's edits doing his, his YouTube but, yeah, channel. His, oh, that's we awesome. got to be friends with him. We got to like do a crossover episode or something. That would be just an absolute yeah, blast. Hyrule Gamer, I, I'm, I'm sure, I hope that you're hearing this right now. Let's, uh, let's make it happen. Let's Hit get together. Up. This is the this is the ironically this is the uh, road trip season anyway season three the season where in which I'm driving all over the place except for when there's a global pandemic little things you know just you know once this lifts I can't wait all right all right next up we have one oh, from Patreon Patreon uh, Christopher Lopez uh, it says thank you I just wanted to show my appreciation by thanking you guys for giving me the opportunity to listen to conversations being had about a game that has so much positive influence on my life. I look forward to all the magical sword edits and future topics. Keep on creating this fun, amazing content. Nice, nice. And another thing that the uh, Patreon magical sword people get mm-hmm. is they get to check out this cool mustache that I grew. Oh my god, that's right. Um, 
I don't like to brag about it too much, but it's possibly my greatest achievement in life <laughs> is growing this beautiful mustache. Yeah, um, it's a full... It's just a full loving mustache. little caterpillar but resting you know, on the top of my lip. Yeah, indeed, indeed. And you've you've kept it classy in that you're not letting it go too far down oh, the Oh, no, sides. It's, not, it's not a handlebar. It is yeah. just, uh, it's just a mustache. It's very managerial. Thank you. Like, I feel like you should be telling me what to do yeah. right now. I tell everyone it's my quarantine stash. I like it. You know, we're going to... Keep this up until we can all go out together, and then like it'll, it. I'll retire. Well, it. I shaved clean myself actually for doing facial hair, but it wasn't for anything. And then actually, even my girlfriend was like, "Well, actually, apparently the no beard thing is very good for mm -hmm. for for germs and yep. for for wearing face a mask masks and all and that other fun like that. jazz." Um, okay, Christopher Lopez, thank you very much. Let me uh, take this off our list. Yeah, he's, he speaks to us a lot over there on Patreon. It's great. Oh, hey, we got a Twilight Princess comment on YouTube. Daniela A said, "Hey." I just found, so Twilight, uh, we did our Twilight Princess review episode back in season one, episode mm -hmm. nine, the ninth episode of this show ever. And she says, hey, I just found out about this podcast and I'm really liking it. Twilight Princess is my second favorite Zelda game just after Breath of the oh, Wild. Wow. And this was really fun to hear. Thanks for the content. I'll be checking more of your channel. Heart emoji. Um, I think Twilight I think Twilight Princess is my second favorite. We should go through and all of the user feedback. We'll just create a tally mark. And by the end, whoever has the most, this is my favorite, is the next game I'll play. Oof. Oof. Okay, maybe I do do a little um, quiz or something. I don't know. I, you know I do, just, I'm excited because there's so many games and it's almost overwhelming to choose which one to play next. You yeah. know, because each one has their own you know celebrated facts and each one has their own like well i mean maybe we move over past that do but you think, i just do you think you're more in the mood for like like the behind the back 3d adventure or more of like a like a top because the top down 2ds they're not quick games they're yeah. still 20 30 40 hour games they're just two very different presentation styles if i had to choose i think i'd want to stick with what i'm used to right now um which is the you know open world kind of yep. feeling um i have a switch so every once in a while i'll pop on uh they have uh not link to the past which one do they have on there links awakening links awakening yeah, yeah. I, and so, no they it's free on the emulators oh a, a link to the past for the super nintendo yeah and so i'll play that and i usually get about 30 minutes in before i'm just like yep that was good and yeah. i just set it down and it's just for some odd reason it doesn't it doesn't keep me. So that might just be a link to the past. Okay. Until I had to play it for our season two finale, I, it was like sacrilege. I didn't like that game. I was, it was hard for me to play that game. I, literally on YouTube right now, there is a series of episodes showing people how bad I am at that game. <laughs> and I wouldn't have finished it if it wouldn't have been for this podcast. I'm so pleased I did. I'm so glad I experienced it. I appreciate it more now. It's David plays Zelda. Poorly. <laughs> I mean, it basically is. It's, I, I actually, I, you know, I, I had to be very careful with the titles. It's, yeah, it is. David plays a blah, blah, blah dungeon from A Link to the Past because I didn't want it to be like, let's play because, yeah. oh, no, no, do not go to these yeah, videos for reference. Yeah, you shouldn't be reference. watching these if you're trying to be impressed by any stretch of the imagination. Indeed, indeed. Over here on, this might be Instagram. I think we got a bit of a, a chatter here. Um, uh, maybe I'll take this one down. I've got the slightly bigger yep. screen here. Um, if over season two, episode 22 on Instagram, there's a little bit, it was our, uh, episode about the making of Ocarina of Time. Okay. And, um, I love doing these making of episodes. I think I said this already, but I, I think this season I want to do a making of Wind Waker because Ooh, that'd be fun. Wind Waker was, had a bit of a troubled development and there's all this controversy over parts of the game that are potentially incomplete and stuff like that. Yeah. And not only like that, it was such a massive change. I mean, the, yeah. the controversy of just the the cell shading, yeah, the you yeah. know the character design in general. I remember when it came out, it it really kind of separated the fans. Some people absolutely hated it, didn't like Kid Link. You know, I think I'm going to start doing research on that, and and I think that would be a very fun episode. So over on over on Instagram, wandering photo Fay said, "Ooh, black heart emoji." I hope I'm not bogging you guys down with posts. I post here and the website. I re I'm really excited about the rumor of DS games coming to Switch so my son and I could play Majora's Mask. Nice. I mean, that would be phenomenal. Oh, yeah. I know the DS is done. We all know it. Mm -hmm. The Switch Lite has replaced the, the 3DS in its price tier. Yep. It's the $200 tier, so we absolutely know there's no more 3DSs coming out. Yep. Shutting um, down the factory. It would be nice to have that happen. There's no real virtual console on the Switch, but I, f I, I feel like these kind of like... You know how like Doom 64 came out and it was mm -hmm. it really was like a 64 port. It wasn't a remake like Link's Awakening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully maybe there's going to be some things like that. 
DS games coming to Switch. So DS has the two screens, though. Yeah. And Which is Switch basically is just the pause screen, isn't it? And, you know, how you'd have to pause in order to get your well, menu it depends open. on the like game. Like, now you're just, it's just always open, right? It depends on the game. If it's something like, gosh, if it's something like Phantom Hourglass where you're playing down on the bottom and you're watching what's going on on the top and all this, or no, 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 the top is the, oh, the top is just the map. Hmm. Hmm. Possibly. Maybe with a little bit of reworking, but that's almost remake territory. That's yeah. not just a port. Anyways. Or, or maybe I should just not do Skyward Sword, not do Twilight Princess, and just play Majora's Mask. So we were talking about that. I, I would love, since you've played Ocarina, I think a really nice jumping off point would be for you to continue with Ocarina mm-hmm. and then I'll do Majora's Mask, because I really want to do a Majora's Mask review this this season. But I'm basically just going to start playing all the Zelda games. This is what we're just going to have to agree this upon. This is what's going to happen. By season four, you're going to be like, yep. And this and this and this mm-hmm. and this. But that's what happens when you do a show like this. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so then uh, speaking in sounds here, uh, kind of replies and says, Wandering Photo Fae, that's one of my all-time favorites, which is uh, Majora's Mask. And then Wandering Photo Fae says his first game was Twilight Princess and mine was the first Zelda. So mm-hmm. Wandering Photo Fae's son's first game was Twilight Princess. Princess. Yes, I tracked that correctly. <laughs> and then CMD. CMD speaks with us constantly, and it's wonderful. Big it's fan. wonderful. C underscore E M M underscore D E E said, I laughed during this episode. Again, this is the Making of Ocarina of Time episode. When I only take cat pics, also known as Kate, <laughs> which is an amazing name, said, Everyone find Dave on Facebook. Be his friend. Ironically, at Rapture Paint, which is me, showed up in my People You May Know feed on Facebook. No mutual friends or anything. Facebook just knows my favorite podcast, Laughy Face. I think I am friends with CMD now in real life. There we go. I mean, in The virtual. algorithm works. Yep. CMD, if you live in the Midwest, once we're, once we're able to socialize again, we'll have to reach out for a, for a meetup. Absolutely. I mean, not just me and CMD. I mean, just like one of these meetups we do. Yeah. It's a super creepy one-on-one meetup. Yeah, just one on just one knock meetup. on his door one day be like, <laughs> I saw you on the internet. (laughs) Would you like to talk about Zelda? (laughs) Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. All right, Dan, let's see. What do we have next? This looks like this might be over on Twitter. It is on Twitter. Um, So this is from Gary Bernard DiNardo Mm -hmm. um, at Another Zelda Pod. I've been listening for about a year. One of the most fun, chill podcasts. I'm on Favorite Side Quests in TP, as I imagine, Twilight Uh, Princess. Yeah, Favorite Side Quests for Twilight Princess. That was an episode we did. And heard you might be doing some meetups. I'm in oh! D.C. and can't attend, womp womp, but I might suggest Lincoln Logger and Zelda Twilight Zincest, <gasps> Zincest as event titles. I love these. Wow, Gary. First of all, puns are the way to my heart, so Lincoln Logger just sounds fantastic. So this is amazing. So so I am the one that collects these social um, listener feedback, Yeah. but the way I do it is as soon as I see a feedback that seems like it just kind of speaks to something, I do a screen grab and I throw it into a shared photo album and i don't look at it again until we do these episodes and so like i don't even remember this i probably saw that it was like a decent thing like oh cool meetups okay that's something that's a speaking point so i love in these episodes when i mean honestly in the beginning of all of our episodes a lot of times when i read them it's almost like they're new Mm -hmm. again yeah yeah gary b d i nardo over on twitter yes and he lives where right now in dc hmm so that's uh, that's quite the commute there's a there's a uh, pub here that's called Gannon's Pub. Oh, We're that's thinking right. of maybe starting there with one of them. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be a couple months. But Gary, this is great. Yes, keep tweeting us about this. I want. I want. Maybe. Oh man, so cool. How do you think we do it? Do you think we do it as Facebook groups? How do you organize these things? Maybe it's a page on our website. I'd imagine we would just probably do Facebook. I mean, most no. of us, uh, most of the listeners are fans and are subscribed to Facebook, right? I suppose. So I think you just throw out a message, see where everyone is. I think it'd be a great idea. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, Over on YouTube for our episode Lynx Loves, which was our third episode ever. Ooh. Um, Wishfish, who actually leaves us a lot of comments, but Wishfish here said, there is a romance-adjacent character in Skyward Sword. It's the inventory shop owner, and Wishfish is absolutely right. So in this episode, Lynx Loves, we kind of, in a fun way, we spoke about all these female characters that seem to kind of have crushes on Link throughout the game. There's yeah, always yeah. like one or two that seem to kind of have the hots for Link, let's face it. And uh, it's true that the shopkeeper, she's very quietly smitten with Link. And I do think that relationship evolves a little bit as you continue to have a relationship with her. And we were talking about this early. I wish there was a Zelda game in which like you as Link got to choose which, uh, which girl 
you you could like kind of court a little bit. Like I know he should always end up with Zelda and all that other stuff, but like well, and not necessarily. Zelda's not always technically a romantic character. This guy wears sword. She certainly is. But anyway, I it just I think it'd be fun because I was always in love with uh, uh what's her name? She's the girl Apona's. Well, I guess is that Malin or Marin? I I forget her name. So there's Talon and Taryn and Malin and Marin, and that's Link's Awakening and Ocarina of Time, and I always swap them. Yeah, but I think it's Malin. Sure. I can't yeah. remember. I think it's, Ma- I think L-O-N is Ocarina. But I even remember playing, I just, and you'd met her and I was just like, oh, like I want to keep talking to her. Maybe there's yeah. like some hidden dialogue if I do this or this and this, and you would just go back to her and she would just say the same thing. And it's just like, it kind of broke my heart. I was like, no, no, we should be better friends. Yeah. Nope. Couldn't do it. So hmm, that's interesting. That's interesting. And always whenever there's a, um, um, who are the water people? I can't believe I'm blanking on the Zoras. Right. Yeah. The Zoras. I always like the Zoras. I wish there was more of a connection with like Link and the Zoras because there's always one Zora that's like absolutely in love with them, you know. Yeah, it, does, it is a bit of a trope. Even in Breath of the Wild, they kind of lean into that again oh, yeah. with Mifa. Mm-hmm. I liked I liked that with Mifa in Breath of the Wild. It seemed like almost like a truer love. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was actually it was like easier pure, to like, digest. Yeah. yeah. I kind of liked it. It was sweet. And there were even moments when I was starting to watch some of the memories where I, you're starting to put the story together, mm-hmm. even though you kind of have a feeling where it's going. And you're yeah. like, oh, oh my gosh, she's literally telling him by in so many ways right now that she's in love with him and stuff like that. And with like an Ocarina of Time, when you think about Rudo, yeah. it's much more tongue in cheek. And she's like kind of flirting with him and saying, you're my husband now and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. I preferred the Mifa relationship, yeah. but anyway. Well, even in Breath of the Wild, when you talk to the other Zora, they're very much like, oh no, she was absolutely in love with you. That's you true. Like everyone was like, oh yeah, no, like you get, she was smitten with you. So I just always, I wish there was just a way for you to explore some other romantic relationships. Yeah, it's interesting with Zelda too in Breath of the Wild. She's, she's like romance adjacent. There's a, I think there's a bonding there and I think mm-hmm. they care about each other, but there's never really like, well, do you know what's interesting about that? I just realized I was about to say there's never really like an embrace. There's never like a, oh, let's cutesy cutesy handhold. Yeah. But what they do is the one of, in my opinion, one of the most emotional moments in any Zelda game when she like falls into his mm, embrace when yep. she she's kind of responsible for some people's deaths and yeah. stuff like that. Yep. Or or rather her lack of certain things, her lack of in her mind, she's taking responsibility to not be able to stop the calamity, which then yep. took and so many people's even lives. Even if you read some of her diaries up in the uh, in her, her little loft, her, yeah, in, her in, tower. In, the lo- in the top, like she, I, from what I remember, she writes about how angry she is at Link. Yeah. She's yeah. just like, he doesn't talk. I don't, I can't read him. I don't know what he's feeling. And it's, it's. I it, think she's even admits to being. She doesn't use the word jealous, but a little jealous. Where yeah. it's like, great, he's awesome. I can't find my thing. Yeah, and it's really, I'm excited to see how their relationship evolves into this next game. I'm too. Because it's you've never seen these two. I mean, it's always been like Link likes Zelda, Zelda likes Link. They're gonna grow up together. Blah. Like yeah. this one is very like these are real people now. Like tropes aside, we're, yes. we're getting into real relationships and whatever that definition is. I sure hope so. Oh, I'm so excited. It, it, I mean, it's only one trailer, but it sure feels like that's the direction it's going. Yeah, and I love it. Absolutely, love it, love it, love it. Um, I don't remember whose turn it is. I think it might be mine. It doesn't really matter too much. But actually, I'll take this one because this is a comment on one of those uh, Link to the Past kind of playthrough videos that I'm doing. Um, let's see, uh, let's see, this is on the episode David Plays, The Palace of Darkness from A Link to the Past, and it's a little side episode we have over on, it's a little side playlist that I've put together on our YouTube channel. And Christian Camillo Mercia, sure. Mercia uh, said, I'm glad you're doing well amidst the current situation. By the way, A Link to the Past is the only Zelda game I have completed. Oh, this is, oh, this episode, as of this recording, just posted a few days ago, The Palace of Darkness, and, um... Uh, that was that was fun to do. It was, I admit, I because we had some cancellations. I'm so excited to record the episodes that we had planned. Yep, we literally had to have a cancellation of two episodes that were in the works, Oof. and that's why there was a week yeah. of downtime here. And Dan, you're kind of coming in here and helping me out, kind of saving the the day a little bit. I do appreciate. Well, I didn't it. want to say those exact words, but that's exactly <laughs> how I feel. Yeah, I want to keep getting these shows out, and I can't <laughs> wait to reprise or return to the episodes that were planned and scheduled. Oh, absolutely. One was with with Nick Zamfati. We mm-hmm. were going to do. We had some amazing topics too. We had like another I, one with Alyssa. I was genuinely excited about like listening to some of these. We'll get too. there. The season three is just going to be a weird season, but we'll get there. Uh, so, Christian, thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. A link to the past. I have a brand new appreciation for it. Um, the thing is with, with it, Dan, is that the, the play style, the physics of it is a little odd. Okay. Or at least it's different than maybe someone like someone who might be used to playing those, these top down games these days. 
And so after a couple dungeons, I had to just let myself play the game the way the game wanted to be played, mm. not play it the way I wanted to play it. Yeah. And then I started clicking. Now, that's not the kind of thing that you get after 30 minutes of play casually just logging in on a Switch. Yeah. I, I don't think I got to it until like I just need hours to, in. I just need to lock myself in a room and just make myself play this game for like two hours until you feel that hook. That's what in it you, is. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Like some games, it takes a while to get that hook. But once you have that, like, you're like, oh, I should probably go to bed or another hour is fine you know <laughs> once that idea pops in your brain you know that game has you it's true oh we got a christopher lopez over here i believe on instagram is that instagram icons on the bottom that might be youtube it's hard to tell these days all their graphic styles are getting the same yeah but anyway christopher lopez over here says uh i just wanted to show my appreciation well, by thank you yep that's a double it's a double that's patreon that's why the icons look so similar uh, yeah, it's the same con- same same message that he sent. Oh well, there with the smiley face at the end of everything. <laughs> Thank you again, Christopher Lopez. Well, then Thank that you. that counts as mine, so you get to go next. No, no, no. What's this? Insomniatic Panda, Panda Hero. Hero. I love it. Let's do this. I don't know what what we're gonna get ourselves into here. This is a comment, possibly over on Facebook. So it says. Hello, I just wanted to say how much I love your podcast. I've been playing various Zelda games since my brother first showed me Ocarina of Time when I was five years old, and it's been an addiction ever since. I haven't played Breath of the Wild for over a year, but I've been listening to your podcast for about two months now to get me through my work days. And since starting your podcast, I've started and just finished my second playthrough of Breath of the Wild. I just wanted to thank you for sparking my Zelda joy again. Your podcast is amazing, and I look forward to many more episodes to come. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Insomniatic panda hero. I think this might be a direct message on Instagram is what this is. Oh, that's fantastic. That is so, I'm so happy to hear that. That's my favorite thing to hear. Oh, yeah. Is when, I almost said guests, when uh, listeners say like. Respark a love. Yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. I started playing again. Absolutely. So much fun. Because it happened to me. I mean, every time I'm done recording these, I go home and inevitably have to go play Breath (laughs) of the Wild for a little bit. (laughs) Just like Like, kidding. Even if it's just, and (laughs) guilty pleasure, not really guilty, but I love cooking things in that game now wow because i never first playthrough didn't cook anything yeah not a single because i skipped or somehow i managed to miss where someone told you how to cook so i just i was like i don't get why people i missed that i must have missed that whole thing and then i found out how and now i love just throwing anything in the pot and that little sound it makes like oh i'm slightly addicted to it i've made way too much stuff that's awesome. I'm I'm fine with that. I'm happy to hear it. I did kind of we did a cooking episode back in season two. Maybe I'll send it your way because possibly you haven't heard it yet. And uh, Kate actually breaks down some of the recipes that are like recommendations Ooh. in Breath of the Wild. It was a lot of fun. I didn't cook much either. Um, I did my mighty banana concoction, but other than that, I didn't cook too much. Just five mighty bananas gives you like super strength for twelve minutes. Wow. It I had no idea. You, oh, Dan. Find mighty bananas. Find <laughs> mighty bananas. Find all of the bananas. You cook five of them. That's all you do. Five mighty bananas. You get mighty simmered fruit. It gives you 12 minutes of times three attack. My stars. Times three. So you just hang on to like five of those. Any kind of boss or anything. You're just like chomp. Yeah. I So uh, the, lady 12 started, minutes. So the lady started playing and she is a perfectionist. You know, she has to go through every little detail. Yes. And so I, I jumped on her game a little bit just to see what her stuff was. And she has like maxed out everything and she still hadn't beaten the game. And then I wanted to show her like after I beat the game what my rank was. And like, I think I was wearing like a level eight hood. And she's like, how in the world did you beat this game? I was like, I don't know. Wait, you weren't buying clothes? I, I mean, if Well, you I, bought clothes, you just weren't upgrading yeah, them? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I found a fairy. Like, you know, I, I just... You really, like, cashed that game. I did. I had a great fine. time. That's I had fine. a great time. I mean, I would never call myself one of those, like... If, if the game seems too big, I instantly close that book on being 100%ist. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I play while I'm having fun. I don't like it when it kind of becomes chory. Right. Um, but like uh, once I felt like I got all Wait the Wait a photogra- second. Aren't you currently playing Animal Crossing? First of all, don't say anything bad about Animal Crossing. Okay. This game is a new addiction that I didn't even know I had. I think Animal Crossing is literally just doing chores. It Well, I mean, chores per se. I mean... <laughs> I'm I'm just I'm actually yeah. giving you a hard time just to joke around. I actually just bought my first uh, lawnmower for my yard. Great, <laughs> yeah. So cool. Yeah. Can't upgrade your clothes in Zelda, but you can buy a lawnmower. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I get it. I get it. That's that's interesting. I think we're going to transition over here. We sure. do some iTunes reviews, and then I think we're going to go to break. I love it. All right, I was just counting up what we have left. Um, so we have some new iTunes reviews. The iTunes reviews are I'm so grateful for them because they every time we get a review. 
or even a star rating, it but the reviews especially, it um, pings the iTunes algorithm a mm-hmm. little bit and it helps us show up in more like, you know, in the whole like Becomes people, more people visual. also yep. listen to lists. It helps build in those things. Very cool. So I'm very, very grateful for any kind of iTunes review ever. Uh, over on Mar- in March 8th, um, a, a person whose screen name is Etoy07 said, oh, the sweet Zelda nostalgia, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Five-star rating. Thank you so much, Etoy07, Etoy07. They said, love, love, love this podcast. Been listening for several months now. I found it after I was starving, all caps, for more Zelda content that was up to date. Oh, because there are a lot of Zelda podcasts out there that are maybe a couple of years old. Mm-hmm. There's some that are current, yep. but I, I myself have Googled yeah, Zelda yeah, yeah. things, and sometimes you find stuff that's a couple of years old. Um, I had recently returned back to the game and all video games, really, after a decade-long hiatus. This past summer, I finally took the dive into Breath of the Wild and couldn't get enough of Zelda. So glad I found this podcast because it's been a trip down memory lane every day with them in the car and the, oh, oh, oh the, the sweet, sweet nostalgia. nostalgia. All caps. David and Kate are personable and professional and take time to think of their fans. They've cultivated a community here, and I love it. Keep up being awesome and genuine, and keep making great content. Thank you, all caps. Well, this is a really... Yeah, this was fantastic. This is sweet. I will be honest. I just grabbed all of our iTunes reviews and did screen grabs. I didn't even read them. I just knew that we were going to do the iTunes reviews. What a gem. This is a great one. Etoy07, thank you so much. Um, We do feel like we're kind of building a little bit of a community. We're very grateful for that. Yeah. Without and the nostalgia thing, and and Dan, I'm so happy for you to be here. I do miss Kate. I spoke to her a few days ago. I was going to ask how she's doing. Well, it was my birthday a few days ago, mm-hmm. and we we back and forth a little bit, and I, I think she's doing well. Great. Like her Great disposition, her disposition is well. Fantastic. And we joked a little bit about your brachiosaur. I sent her a picture of the brachiosaur you got me for my birthday. It has the most muscular legs. And I also received a switch from my girlfriend for my Ooh. birthday. And so stop the presses, everyone. <laughs> David finally has gotten a switch. This is. This is monumental. You don't understand. He has been hemming and hawing about this switch for so long. I know. Uh, the very first thing I did was purchase the Link, Link's Awakening remake. Yep. I'm happily in the middle of... Uh, I'm over at Candlelit Castle right now, loving every second of it. And I also digitally downloaded Cadence of Hyrule last night. Very I cool. I played the first level. It's neat. I'll get into it later. There was another... There might even be on this thread of listener feedback. There's someone like asking for a, list, uh, for a Cadence of Hyrule episode. I digress. Etoy07, thank you so much, Dan. I think we have another iTunes review. Why don't you take it? Yeah, this is from Eric uh, Slater. S- yeah. L.A. Slater. Back in uh, April. Oh, recently. Five, yeah, five stars. Very awesome. I just recently discovered this hidden gem of a podcast, and I've had so much fun going through their backlog. As a lifelong Zelda fan, I got to say, this is required listening. Required listening. Ooh. I love it. I'll take it. And his his uh, his review was titled "Hey, listen." So actually, an aptly titled review for an episode like this. Let's see here. I can take the next one. Uh, oh, this is interesting. So so uh, someone who goes by VV two nine nine said, "Kate and David, you must." And that's literally the title of the review. Let's see what it's they have to say. Very attention grabbing. <laughs> Please, you must. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you must stop saying that you need the Keaton mask in Ocarina of Time. You can just show the guard the princess paper. But otherwise, love the pod. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Um, no, yes. <laughs> no joke. Um, <laughs> commentary. First time I read this, I was like, there's a Michael Keaton mask in Ocarina of Time. <laughs> and I got like, David, no one told me that there was a Michael. And I was like, oh, the Keaton's little. I, little I was Pikachu slightly disappointed. Thing. Because I think a Michael Keaton mask would have made the game, like, top tier, greatest game of all time. (laughs) I don't know about that. Oh, come on. Michael Keaton. (laughs) But what version of Michael Keaton? It's got to be. I don't know. I See, I would go Batman. I mean, It's like early 80s Michael mm -hmm. Keaton. With a a nice little, like, chin. Yeah, and the puffy hair. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. I'm Batman. You want to get dangerous? <laughs> Let's get crazy. Let's get oh crazy. That's God. what he says. That's what he says. Um, you thank you very much, VV299. <laughs> Walk up to Genin. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? <laughs> Jesus. Um, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. We've got one from Gamey T Frog. Okay. Over on iTunes. There we go. This is best podcast ever. Five Dang. stars. Dang. Um, I love sitting down and listening to you guys for hours. As soon as I found you could, or as soon as I found you, I couldn't stop listening. 
You two have got me back into the Zelda spirit, causing me to try and play all the games in uh, caps. As a fellow Chicagoan, <gasps> I can't wait for you guys to have a meetup in oh. the city. Keep up the amazing work. Gamey T Frog, it's happening. Wait. Just, yeah, just maybe just, not right now. We need <laughs> like, certain we things gotta, to calm down. You just got to wait this out. And I wait, can't is wait. it the 14th today as we record this? Um, today is the 14th. This is technically, literally, literally, the peak of the virus in Chicago. Oh, they officially Apparently called it? today, yeah. I mean, that's, what the, that's what the algorithms are saying, mm-hmm. that it should be the peak today. Anyways, um, Gamey T-Frog, I can't wait. Stay in touch with us. Find us on Twitter. Something. Find me personally on Twitter. I'm at Raptor Paint. Find the show at another Zelda pod. I don't care. We must stay in touch. I need to make Zelda friends in Chicago. That's so exciting. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to take that one out. Let's see. What do we have next? Um, over uh, over on iTunes, Epic underscore Mondo 714. Also the title, Best Zelda Podcast Ever, exclamation points, uh, says here, Kate and David, your podcast is the best. I found your podcast around the start of season two and have been listening ever since. I always wait in anticipation for the next episode and have listened to all of your episodes around 10, ten times, times through. Wow, get it. Epic. Epic Mondo. Thank you. The flow of these episodes are perfect with your hilarious jokes and love for Zelda. Just what I'm looking for in a podcast. Thanks for the great content. Okay, bye. Love I it. I love it. I love this. I love this so much. We, we. I think I said this a minute ago, but we do miss Kate so much. I know she's well. Can't wait for an opportunity to um, to share this with her. And I can't wait to meet her. Like I, You've I, never met her in person yet? I've never met her in person. Wow, that's she right. She is like this a mysterious figure that is because crazed we didn't, and, you know. Because we didn't even go to Midwest Gaming Classic this nope. year. It got canceled. Yeah. Wow. Kate, I can't wait to meet you. That'll happen. There we go. That'll happen. What's I think let's I think if there's one more iTunes review, we might be moving on. Oh, this is this is for Twitter. This is on Twitter. Dan, why don't you read this one and uh we'll go to break after this. Uh this is from what, Galutrad? Gal- I'm always so worried that I'm mispronouncing all at of these. G-A-L-U-T-R-A-D, at okay. Galutrad. Uh, Galutrad. Uh, sure. Just finished listening to all of season one of At Another Zelda Pod. Uh, this podcast has changed my life in a way that I will always and forever be grateful for. Keep doing what you do, green heart. Green heart emoji. I love it when we get the green heart. That is a, a pleasure. Um, uh, thank you, yeah. Galutrad. It's also changed my life in a way that I will always remember. Um, and we will, we, we will keep doing what we do. We will, we will, man. You know, Dan, there are times we do get messages like this once in a while where someone says like, uh, thank you so much. Or it, it, it's, I'm so happy and excited and grateful that people feel that way Yeah, because we're, because like the thing that Kate and I started was just us sitting at her dining room table Yeah, and We've always tried to kind of keep it pretty genuine and everything mm-hmm. like that. And if this is, let, let me put it this way. Kate and I would get together because we'd want to talk about stuff. Yeah. You and I, we're getting together because we want we to talk, talk about, about stuff. stuff. Yeah. Um, and for other people to respond to that too and feel a part of it. I've made a lot of podcasts. Oh, yeah. I've never had one that's had this kind of, oh, yeah. um, like kind of communal reaction. It's insanely humbling. And it's 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 truly a gift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really neat. That's awesome. Galutrad, thank you so much. I think on that, let's take a break. Um, and we'll probably hear an ad for Studio Demands It, another 6 5 show. Can't wait, can't wait. Uh, Dan, as you move to St. Louis, you and I have mutually agreed that you might be putting together a show for 6 5 yourself. Yeah, we're talking about it. You won't be it's, around it's as much. What are you very, thinking of doing? Very early, early in development. Um, I know I still um, want to keep it with my love of video games. Um, I don't play them. As much, but when I do, I really hunker down and wait a second, Dan. You don't want to do like a movie podcast or something? I, I don't know. It, it, like, I don't know. what about a comic book podcast? See, I would love to do a comic book podcast, but I'm so out of touch with what's currently going on. I don't know if it needs to be current. I mean, look at Zelda. We're talking about games that are 30 years old. Like, I just read um, DC Comics Metal, <laughs> and it was the most insane, like kind of ride I think I've ever read in a comic book just because I'm not sure if it made sense, but I didn't care, okay. you know? And that's how you know, like, it's a good uh, comic series. So there's a lot of great comics out there, and I'd love to do that, but it, it would have to be between movies and video games, I think. Fair enough. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm excited that this, that, that the, the, if, if there's, 
there's plenty of positive things in your life coming from this move. Mm-hmm. Um, your girlfriend's trajectory in her career is yep, very, doing very great. exciting. Doing great. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, um, I'm a little bit sad to, to not be seeing you every day, so to speak, at work once the move happens. It's only a four-hour commute. I, I know. Mean, but... The, but if there's an if there's an additional good thing that's coming out of this is that I think that this might be spawning you creating something from six yep. five and I think that that's wonderful. I love it. Super cool. And so, then you get to be a guest on my I show. Know. Oh my god, you'd be driving, man. I'm I'm so we're down. Ooh, we'll that'd do be it. so cool. All right, let's go to break. Um, listen to that good old studio demands it ad, and uh, we'll be back with about twenty more listener feedback. Sound good? Love it. Love cool. it. Love it. Love it. Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. Hey everybody, David here. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to talk to you about some of the updates we have on our Patreon page. Now, as some of you know, we do have our three tiers, the sword tier, the white sword tier, and the magical sword tier. And we've been getting some really tremendous support over on Patreon. It's it's truly amazing. And I want to tell you a little bit about some of our new rewards. So for starters, we've decided to add the wallpaper reward to our sword tier. This means that anyone who is a supporter on Patreon will get a special thank you on our website and they'll also receive the ability to download wallpapers once a month from our Patreon page. Now I make these wallpapers myself and it's a lot of fun. They come in a variation of screen sizes. I also make a phone version and an iPad version. I even make an Apple Watch version which is kind of fun. Next we have our white sword tier and that's staying pretty much the same. What the white sword level will give you is early access to each of our episodes. Typically it's about a week before. Um, Also advertisement free versions of those episodes and I record a little patreon specific intro before each one just a touch of behind the scenes before we get into the episodes also of course on the white sword tier we have our bonus content which we release just little mini episodes every oh i don't know every three or four normal episodes we put a little mini episode in there that will also be available on the private rss link that you'll receive by becoming a white sword member and lastly this is the big one our magical sword tier kate and i have decided to bring a camera with us into the studio you could say every single episode going forward after episode 17 of season two. So we just kind of set this camera up and we say a little quick intro to our Magical Sword patrons and we let them be there with us, so to speak, while we record the episode. I'm really excited about this because I've been wanting to give our Magical Sword supporters something really special and I think this is a great way to do it. Okay, so that's it. You can go to patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. You can also find links on our website to our Patreon page. We're so grateful for the support we've received already and um, if you are interested in any of these rewards at all, please go check us out. And we are back. Dan, that was an interesting gesture as we came in. I was going to say it with you, but then I was like, no, no, uh, let him do it. So oh, I just so mouthed it the entire time. When I'm on your show a mm-hmm. year from now, I'm going to say it. And then when you do, I'll be like, we're going to shut it down. This is my show. I'm going to, I'm going to, I can't wait to diva the entire thing. They're like, David, what do you think? No one cares what you think. Mm-hmm. Moving on now. And then it's going to get real weird. Then real weird. I'll have TC be on your show or you be on TC's show. And you guys are going to be like, we don't actually know each other. Yeah, what are we doing here? It's like, I've known you guys for 10 years. How much you guys ever met? Like, David, we've never met You're before. part of an ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait. All right, cool, cool, cool. So um, we're going into Twitter territory here, and then I think we're going to kind of end Twitter with... Twitter territory. Twitter Terry, ter- Terry Town territory? Uh, I tried. Swing and a miss. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, Twitter, and then we're going to end with a whole bunch of YouTube. Love it. So let's do some Twitter. 
You want to take this Maple Bee? Yeah, Maple Bee. Uh, this is at Maple Bee 7567. We, if I may, real quick, we hear from Maple Bee often. Um, oh, hey. Maple Bee's a great supporter. Nice to meet you, sir. Uh, listening to the newest at another Zelda pod with at still sane Shane mm-hmm. and at Raptor Paint mm-hmm. as I make dinner. I'm enjoying hearing about the non-canon Link appearances. It's been fun to hear about some I've forgotten learn and to learn some stuff I didn't know too. Exclamation point. I learned stuff on that episode. I learned about the Link appearance in the Sonic game. Yeah, you were. we were talking about that a little bit earlier. Yeah, that blows my mind. I'll show it to you later. Um, I'm always curious how the contracts work. You know, especially with like a Sega and a Nintendo, or is it like yeah. they're just friends and someone goes like, yeah, you can use them for this game. Or so it's, I mean, it gets really complicated. Yeah, there's got to be. really a, like, complicated. There's like, the, uh, I, uh, speaking about film, um, in film, one of the most famous contract s- stories in film that, that I know of that I get a kick out of is we, with Roger Rabbit. That was a merging of like three or four different massive animation mm-hmm. companies that were typically usually competitors. Yeah. Warner Brothers and Disney were the two main yep, ones. Yep. And there's the famous, now famous scene where um, the gentleman's falling down the, to the yeah, ground. The, the parachute. And it's Mickey the, and mm, Bugs Bunny mm, appear on the screen at the same time, first time in history. Yep. Right? It's like, that does not happen. So they were going back and forth about how to do it, back and forth how to do it. You know, Donald Duck and Daffy Duck appearing in the dueling. Mm-hmm. Um, there was literally contracts about how many lines, how many oh. words each character says to make it be fair. And Disney and Warner Brothers couldn't figure out how to have these two icons, Mickey and Bugs Bunny, on the screen at the same time legally. Yeah. Like, And what they ended up coming up with was, I believe, if I remember correctly, Bugs spoke first. But Mickey had to appear first. Isn't that ridiculous? Like so, like in the shot, ugh. Mickey had to come into the shot first, and then Bugs. But then yeah. Bugs could say something first, and then the companies were able to agree on the contracts. I always like to think of the um, the Marvel universe when Sony owned yes. X Men, and so during no, 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 no. Sony had Spider Man. Sony had X Men for a while. Oh no, no, Sony never had X Men. That was what? always Fox or Fox. Oh, yep, yeah, you're right. But the Marvel universe couldn't use words like mutant, mutant, and adamantium. Oh really? Yeah, from what I remember. So because, how did they? Because yeah. Captain America's shield, from what I recall, should have been made of adamantium, and they <gasps> changed it to vibranium. To vibranium. Um, and, and if I'm wrong, that. I apologize to all the comic book nerds out there. Like I said, it's been a while since I've read them, um, and that's why, like, because Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver yes. are mutants. Yes. And they were like, no, they're just people who were tested upon with the. Uh, Infinity Stone or whatever one it was. And yep. like, so they took these people, they can't say, they literally can't say the word mutants, mm-hmm. but they still like wanted to use these characters and how do we bring them in? And just like the whole contractual dispute between the whole uh, trilogy yeah. of them. So, yeah, it's fascinating. So, stuff like that. So, to have Link appear in a Sonic game, it, I mean, by the time that Sonic game came out, I think it was like almost a Wii U exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Nintendo and, you know, it was, it might have been, I mean, they've been, Nintendo and Sega have been getting increasingly friendly with the Olympic games that they do. Yeah. Oh, and that's right. By the way, those games are technically, technically made by Sega. Really? Okay. Yeah. And then Nintendo gives them the. They keep coming out every year. Yeah. Sega makes them and Nintendo gives them the character models. Um, but the the Sonic game, it was like Sonic Worlds, whatever. Gosh, maybe it was a Switch game. Anyways, Link appears. Um, here we go. Back on to... Uh, so just the other day, we tweeted about the 28th birthday of A Link to the Past. Okay. Full disclosure, I believe my... Uh, a, a Not a partner in crime. Uh, Celeste Roberts, who has become a leading force for another Zelda podcast. She Big fan of her. She... Is the editor for all the blogs. Mm-hmm. She does. She has access to our Twitter account. And she'll tweet for us. Well, I was in the thick of it, and she uh, put out this tweet about Happy Twenty Eighth Birthday to A Link to the Past North America Release Day. Have you played this classic instrument or er, installment, installment in the series? Yeah. Would you ever want to see a remake of the updated graphics and mechanics? Let us know. So, thank you so much, Celeste. I appreciate helping me keep the Twitter account alive. And um, we got a lot of replies, but mm-hmm. one that kind of caught my attention was Amalu at A M A L U U said, "What I would love to see is a Breath of the Wild style remake of the first original Ooh. Legend of Zelda." Now, this is interesting because yes, um, but secondly, <laughs> first of all, yes, it's like just <laughs> agreement. Yeah, moving on. But secondly, some agree that the Breath of the Wild is a spiritual reimagining of that first one. Mm-hmm. But how would they? You know. Maybe there is a world where they could literally represent that first game 
with the Breath of the Wild with the Breath of the Wild engine. Engine, yeah, that'd be interesting. I'd, I'd have to play a little bit more, but I just feel like there'd be for it being like the the top down two D scroller, like yeah. there would be so much room for extra stuff in there, you know, because yeah. it's it's kind of a bare bones kind of thing, you know right. what I mean? You're right. Like you would have to fill in. I mean, what you took from the game would be like. 10% if not less you would have to fill in so much more so like, for example if you enter a screen in the original game where there's four trees or six trees or, yeah. or six rocks sometimes yeah. with a border if you really did that in real in the breath of the wild engine I mean, you'd there's have just to, six rocks you'd have to fill it in with stones and sticks and mm-hmm. grass and, and creatures. what used to be just like a like a blue area that was water <laughs> you know can you fish there like can you walk oh, there's can you logic wait in there like if yeah. you're going to do the full treatment, like you would have to just unfold so many different levels to make that work. And then do you even recognize it as that game anymore? And I mean, as long as I, I think it, I don't know. I will tell you this. So I am playing the Link's Awakening uh, remake right now. Mm-hmm. A little late to the party, but I'm playing it. I'm loving it. The fact that it scrolls and doesn't do the screen to screen thing. Yeah. Now I've played a Link to the Past. I'm so sorry. Link's Awakening. I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. I've played Link's Awakening maybe four four times through on the Game Boy. Wow, okay. It's it's my third favorite. It's one of my favorite games. Absolutely. Um, it's a little weird to play it scrolling yeah. and not to have these little segmented Not like the views. like just kind of yeah. shifting every time you go into a door, everything slides right, down. Right, because it compart- compartmentalizes your uh, processing of the map. Yeah. And so when I'm playing Link's Awakening, even though I'm loving it, it's just different enough that sometimes I'm I'm almost not recognizing portions of the game. Like it's not no longer is it the oh this is the screen with the blah blah blah. Now I'm just kind of passing through the blah so blah blah. So do they have to make the like the small stretches that you're just walking like longer so that way you feel like you're actually moving? In Link's Awakening, you know what I mean. They it is a one to one complete accurate map of the original. Wow. Every grid is the same. Um, so they've done a wonderful job with that. You're just scrolling through it now. It's not screen mm-hmm. screen. So yeah. if you were to do something like that, where you're doing a top down and you're going to bring it into Breath of the Wild and still make it feel like, so when I'm playing Link's Awakening, even though it's a little weird to have the scrolling, I do feel like I'm back on Cahoylan Island. Yeah, like I feel like I'm there. I don't know. How do you do it with Breath of the Wild? With I would, I would love Breath of the Wild style. Yeah, just take that engine and and make it a digital download for ten dollars or yeah. whatever. That would be an, a blast and a half. Or rather, recreating Breath of the Wild. See that's the original engine. See that's what I was going to say. I think it'd be fun to take Breath of the Wild and try and not eight bit it, but like to bring it back and just kind of because it's easier to minimalize than it is to expand out. So it'd be fun to try and play Breath of the Wild in the style of the original um, Zelda games. I think that'd be really really fun. Well, what's also interesting about that is perhaps you you may or may not know about this, but but. there was a video released by Nintendo where they showed that when they were trying to conceptualize how the Breath of the Wild logic would work, all the systems, Mm -hmm. they actually created a 2D version first. Have you not seen this? I have not seen this. When we're done recording, I'll show you. You will love it. I'm sure I will. There is a basically original Nintendo or original Legend of Zelda. I'll just say it's not a ROM, but it's like uh, it's, it's a 2D logic where if you cut down a log if you cut down a tree it turns into a log if you push a log into a river it flows down the river and they made a an 8-bit we'll say version just to test all the logic and then they brought it into 3d yeah oh dang that's That's amazing dang that's cool uh over here on twitter david wayne nydstrom at david wayne 09 said another zelda pod you guys rock you and my thoughts and prayers are with kate and her family as a faithful listener i will miss her voice but taking care of family comes first. As a fellow Milwaukeean, oh my gosh, it's so cool. If there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. Now, Kate does live in Milwaukee. I live here in Chicago. David Wayne Nystrom, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure Kate has seen this tweet. I The last time I saw her in Milwaukee was about a month ago. What's up? You're smiling. I was like, how much money you got, Dave? <laughs> just as what? a joke. Just, just a joke. Oh, like a... Yeah, it's like, yeah, let's... <laughs> there's any way I can help. help. Yeah, like, well, a million dollars. Yeah, a million dollars would be fantastic. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. <laughs> so, David, if we ever, when, when we inevitably do do a meetup in Milwaukee, that's great. Stay on our Twitter, please. Thank you very much. That's awesome. That was back in February, February 28th. And it does speak to our missing of Kate a little oh, bit, yeah. as I've already said in the first half of this episode. We miss her dearly. I'm so pleased to also be sharing this show with all of you guest co hosts, mm-hmm. however, though, Dan. We're glad to be here. 
Indeed, indeed. All right, where are we going after this? Uh, up next, we have Jacob, comment internet guy, uh, at uh, jcas6502, sending my best wishes to Kate at another Zelda pod, and at Raptor Paint, or, oh no, at Raptor Paint, pulled at the heartstrings a bit when talking about how supportive everyone has been. Okay, bye. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I did, so there was, a, I did put out a special yeah. message at the top of season three to, to, to just kind of contextualize this season a little bit. And um, I'm, I'm pleased, Jacob, that you were moved as much by the context as I was. Let's put it that way. <laughs> How much money do you have, Jacob? Oh, Dan. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right. Oh, Dan, you got to read this I'm one. I'm excited about this one. So this Excuse- speaks a little bit to our episode that we did, the first episode of season three. This is David Wayne uh, Nystrom again. Oh, it's him again. Yep. Add another Zelda pod. Uh, listening to the best ad episode. If you do recreate the shouting ad... When you shout Lionel, please cut to just a shot of Lionel Richel, Richie playing the piano. I don't know why, but that was the first thing I pictured uh, when you did it. So, and then there's an amazing image of Lionel Richie saying, hello, is it me you're looking for? And it has to happen. This, yeah, This, I without think so. a doubt, will be the cherry on the end of this season. I'm going to make it happen. The joke that we made, the joke that we made is we take that original Zelda commercial where the guy in the turtleneck's running around Zelda? screaming, <laughs> and all those things. But we use like... Breath of the Wild characters. And yes, there were Lionels technically in that first game, but we really quickly we said, I think you or someone hollered out like, Lionel, Lionel. And so then David Wayne. I can't wait to like, my mom blends, <laughs> like whatever they're called. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, there's a lot. Is it Boca blends? Is it Bacoblins? I'll, I'll mispronounce it a thousand blends. times. I promise oh, you. Wouldn't that be funny? Wait, that's how we do it. Every single one has to be pronounced incorrectly. Oh, yeah. Or we do so a it's doc- not Lionel. It's like, Lenial! Or, or we do a documentary style of trying to film the new one where it's like, I go, Bogoblin! And you're like, cut, Dan. It's Bogoblin. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think it is, David. No, it is. Look right yeah. here. We'll just make it like an hour-long documentary Netflix <laughs> kind of thing. You'll be streaming it by the end of this year is what I'm trying to tell you. Look, My goodness. All the major streaming sources. <laughs> We're, so, we're in contact with who? But I'm laughing right now, but inside, I want I, it to totally be true. I'm totally excited about I want it to be it. true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we move on to some of our YouTube stuff. Christopher Lopez, who we've heard previously heard from Big over on Patreon. Christopher is uh, is certainly certainly part of the community. Uh, he replied really quick to the Desert Palace episode. So this is the first David Plays episode. And he says, it'd be awesome if you and Kate did a stream of y'all for one of your uh, for one of you at separate t- or one of you at separate times playing Zelda, I get I get requests. Yeah, for, have you for ever us thought do, about streaming or anything? I get requests for us to do streams often. I feel like it's inevitable mm-hmm. right now. I don't think the pro- our production can support it, but sure. but if the show grows enough, where in which we can support that, I think it could be fun. Obviously, it, it would have to be an adjacent experience. I don't think it should replace episodes oh, on no, the podcast no, no. or anything. A fun get together would be if everyone has a Nintendo Switch and the new Smash Brothers. Okay, you guys could all pick a night. Everyone has to choose a Zelda because the Zelda representation in Smash Brothers it's, is it's heavy. Yes, I mean you have tons of characters and then just you know one fight to rule them all kind of thing. You know, that's not bad. The thing about streams that's interesting is you have to kind of grow a culture. You have to almost stream reg- regularly mm-hmm. for people to. Um, oh, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. And if you just kind of won and done it, uh, there's less going on there. But still, that's 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 cool. I have streamed other things back when I was doing my technology podcast. I used to do, I used to stream on the Creative Channel on Twitch um, when I was building all the episode graphics. It was captivating. I saw a stream once. It was in a forest. <laughs> Dan, Dan, you get out of here. You get <laughs> Thank out you. of here. Thank right Thank you, now. everyone. That's uh, that's my exit cue. Get it was out. nice being here while I could. Paul Act over here commented over on YouTube. I always say his last name in a funny way. Paul Act uh, Atk, uh, said, okay, this episode was awesome, but did David <laughs> get his appointment in time? What? Oh, did David get to his appointment in time? Oh, that's right. That's right. At the end of A Link to the Past, our season two finale, um, I had to leave for work. Yeah. I was there. And at the he time- He was super late that day. We, you and I worked no, together, as I, I say know. all the time. We probably worked together that evening. Mm-hmm. And this is at, back at a time where I was working in the evenings. Now I work at the crack of dawn. Um, and yes, I did get to my episode in time, Paul. Thanks Thank for you. caring. See, that's the community we like in this. Just But I tell you what, it was like from Kate's house to Chicago. It oh, was, oh I did man, not... so you had to do like a heck of drive. Yeah, so what? Oh, it wow. was, so three o'clock hit, Dan. And you know that we normally start around 4.30. Mm-hmm. And I was in Milwaukee. And I needed to be... In Logan Square, Chicago, 
an hour and a half later and my watch was dinging and my my like auto sensors you know how like Siri will be like it's time to By leave the way, to get you're to your really head. far away yeah. <laughs> suggested leaving time all that kind of stuff 20 minutes ago everything yeah. was dinging and pinging and we were still recording and I basically had to say like Kate I'm so sorry I gotta go yep I got to work in time Thank you, Paul, for your concern. <laughs> there was one time I was in St. Louis, which is about four and a half hours away, and I timed yeah. it. Like, I had to be at work at four and a half hours. Like, I just drove from St. Louis to my store, and then I was like, well, I was like five minutes late, but I was like, that's amazing. Like, wow. I was pretty proud of myself. Wow. Uh, what's going on over here for top 10 emotional storylines over on YouTube? Uh, so we have Le Jumping Master Sword. Um, <laughs> I love it. Just think about it. In Breath of the Wild, you are walking over hundreds of graves alone, knowing that you had part uh, had part in it from the Calamity 100 years before. Top 10 Ooh. emotional storylines. So, yeah. so he's he or she is speaking to the idea that when you're in Breath of the Wild, obviously the Calamity happened 100 yeah. years before, and a lot of everywhere. death happened. I mean, everywhere. If not, 10, if, if not 90%. Fatalities. If you you know, there's only disparate little towns that are still surviving. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's yeah. That's kind of somber. Uh. Kind of sobering. Um. So I would. It makes that cooking a little less yeah. fun now, doesn't it? <laughs> Five <laughs> mighty <laughs> bananas <laughs> equals whatever you want. Uh, you're on they all have died. Of soldiers. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, I was. Right. Yeah, we were yes. talking about this a little earlier, and so if anyone has ever been to uh, Gettysburg in Pennsylvania, um. Yeah. It is probably one of the most chilling. If you just take a second and look at what you're and realize what you're actually looking at, yeah, it is. It's and I don't use this word too often, but it's actually haunting. Yeah, you know, because some people like you see like all these kids who are like on a field trip and don't really care, but if you sit back and realize like this field years and you know years ago and all of the blood, like I think they said there was so much bloodshed yeah. that it changed the pH of the. Like dirt, the soil, yeah, the goodness. soil. Like it's, and it, it, you really have to like take a step back and really respect. And oh, it's you always, you almost have to give yourself a moment of silence. So yeah, I, I completely understand that Fair if you enough. think about that and that kind of reality. Yeah, that is kind of dark. Quite emotional. Um, Ed Baggett over here on YouTube's uh, on our link to the past episode uh, said another <laughs> great episode. <laughs> Each episode flows so well, and it is so refreshing to hear two fans talking about The Legend of Zelda. It is great to listen to this, especially when I don't have time to jump back into the various different games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, listening from the other side of the pond in London and sharing the podcast with as much as possible, maybe as much as people as possible. Can't wait for season three. So uh, Ed left this message certainly before we got season three going. And thank you so much, Ed Baggett, over in London. That's really cool. Yeah. Cross the pond. Across the pond, indeed. I don't have time to jump back into the various games. I like that. Sometimes there's a couple YouTube channels that I watch um, that will, there, quite frankly, there's a couple like roller coaster YouTube channels mm -hmm. or a couple like um, tiny house YouTube channels. And I, and I watch these episodes <laughs> because it's like. You would love the tiny house YouTube channels. I feel like that's right up your alley. I literally subscribe to like three <laughs> of them. This is my surprised face. <laughs> and. Um, and, ooh, are you getting a phone call? No, that would be rude and <laughs> And unprofessional. Yeah. Dan, why don't you regain your professionalism and take this next comment? So this is Alex in a Box. Um, uh, this is from our favorite Zelda TV commercials. Oh, yours uh, and mine. Yeah, this was a fun one. Uh, lovely episode. Glad to have you back. And <laughs> totally glad to have you back. And all the love to Kate. How would you feel about doing an episode with a tabletop RPG in the world of Zelda. Well, as far as doing an episode, I'm, I'm not so sure. But like, Dan, let's spitball this for a second. Okay, throw it at me. How could... We don't have to get into the details of the specifics because I feel like there's a whole episode I feel, here. I feel like we have to make that sure would be we a blast. don't get too far into this. But let's see. What would it be? Zelda Tabletop. So are we talking, is it like, is it a bit like the Ghostbusters game or like a Battletech where you're actually, you've got a big old map and you're putting characters out? Or do you think it's more of a verbal, like a Dungeons and Dragons, or maybe it's more of an abs Dungeons and Dragons with an abstract map for reference? So I don't know. You could either, you could go both ways. I think if you're going to use an actual board, I think there's enough characters in the Zelda universe yeah. that you could easily, everyone gets to pick and choose. <gasps> yeah. I think I just know, got an idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so... Um, from all the games, I think you'd have to have all the like you know heroes and allies that Link has had and Zelda had had or have okay, had. Okay, you, you just touched on something. I just thought about one thing. What if the overworld or Hyrule Field or whatever was conversational, mm -hmm. like a Dungeons and Dragon game? Uh, yeah. Okay. And then when you enter the dungeons, 
Now you go into a tile based, you know, build the build the dungeon as you go, laying tiles down, kind of game. Yeah. Because because of course the one of the things that's important in Legend of Zelda is you don't see the whole map until you get the map. You don't yeah. see the whole thing. Well, if you do the D and D style, the dungeon master would have to have everything pre laid out. I don't know. Oh, I think you'd have to. Oh yeah, you're right. Because so puzzles work and stuff. So it's not just like a dungeon crawler that's randomly generated. Yeah. So you'd have to. I mean, if you could pre-make it out... But you'd lay down room by just, room. Yeah, they could go whatever path they needed to, you know. No, that's fine. I like this idea that where the overworld is conversational, we don't need an overworld map. We don't need people going one, two, three, four on the overworld map. And I would say that the world and the universe is so... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's so tight together that I don't think you'd even have to be a character from it. You could create your own. Are you a Hyrulean soldier? Are you a Goron? Are you a... Oh, interesting. You know what I mean? You could pick whatever race you'd want, create your own character, and then work that way. Okay. Holy cow, you might be onto something. You because, know what I mean? Because what makes a Zelda game a Zelda game, for the most part, is that you play as Link. You play as the silent protagonist, mm-hmm. your Link. You're actually playing as you. Is What makes a Zelda game a Zelda game is you're actually playing as you. Yeah. Um, so a Zelda game is not typically a group gauntlet game. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting to try and play with another person in the Zelda world. But I think it'd work. I, I would definitely, I would throw some money at a Kickstarter if this uh, <laughs> if this is something that Nintendo was trying to play around with. If it was Nintendo, they wouldn't have to Kickstarter, but I hear you. Oh, well, yes, they do have a lot of money. They'd be like, and here's $5 billion. <laughs> Same with our other guys. See if we can get them back. <laughs> if we can get them Jacob, we're oh, talking to you. Interesting. There might be something that's interesting. I like that idea. I think it's like a dungeon crawler, lay the tiles down, almost like um, was it Destiny or whatever that there's a t- there's a tile based dungeon game. It starts with a D, and I can't remember what it's called right now. It's very cool. Even well, when you're younger, you play like Hero Quest, and yeah. you got the preset. Well, anyone who's played the Ghostbusters game, I yeah. mean, they have tiles, and each you can move them around. So, I mean, you have nine tiles, but that's like sixteen different maps. Just because based of the on arrangement, the, right? Yeah, the arrangement. Each yeah. you know, you have to defeat the quest of whatever. Or the yeah, it could work, and I'd play quite a lot of. So, it. so let's real quick, just to not get too deep, but like, okay, let's assume we're gonna do a class style game. So it's 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 Zelda. It's Zelda adjacent. It's the best way. So if it is gonna be a party, a party based version of Zelda, and I don't mean party like a party game like Mario Party, but where you have a party that's now yeah. with Link. Mm-hmm. You have a Link type character. So is, you have a Goron. You have a Zora. See, I think you'd have to remove Link. I think it, it would have to be one of those like Link is missing. Zelda calls upon wow. the the you know we need our best champion from every single okay. da, da, da 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 and for some odd reason these or she uses her Triforce power to find the. The the I don't know, the select you know in the select invisible and sure. so you are just a Goron who's eaten a rock and all of a sudden like you get the call and then you have to go to the castle if you're just a what are the birds called again the Rito the Rito you're just a Rito who's hanging out and then all of a sudden you get the call and it's like one from each wow and it's specific and then you get to start from nothing and then that's how you get to build your character up what do you want to be what I can like your this. character do you know and because here's the thing I agree you can't Maybe you can't have Link yeah, you, because, yes, okay, what makes a Zelda game? It's that you're playing as Link because you're playing as yourself, but but maybe in a tabletop RPG doesn't need to be a Zelda yeah. game. It's a tabletop RPG. Yeah. You, you need Just to, put it in the Zelda universe. You need to create your own person, and I think you have to remove Link from that, so that way... Yeah. And no one wants to fight over who gets to be okay, Link. Okay, because you do something weird where like Link is still there, but they're, they are controlled by the Dungeon Master, so they are a, a monster... But they're a ally. Link is? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It could happen. It's always easy to search for the person who's the most powerful. You know, you just remove them and then that is the quest. Okay, fair enough. You know, it's just an easy way to do it. Yeah, sure. Um, now, Link could also be, you know, the person who guides you, you know. For well, that's, what, yeah, pseudo dungeon master is what I was thinking. Okay, yeah, that would work. I would play that. Who would you be? But wait, no, Link can't talk. I don't know. What? Who would, who would you I, be? Okay. Um, Dungeon and Dragon style. You have to choose one of the classes. So our classes would be Goron, Rito, Zora, uh, Gerudo. That's the Breath of the Wild, but let's see if there's anything else that I'm not thinking of. Maybe Deku. Oh, yeah. Okay. Deku would be Kuro- in there. Kuro- 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 Korok. Korok. Korok could be there, but they're kind of Deku adjacent. Mm-hmm. They're- Can you imagine like one of them in like straight up armor? 
A cool like, hawk? Yeah. Would that be it, fun? I think it'd be amazing. Cree cree. <laughs> <laughs> or a little navy that has like a little armor shell. Wow. You know? Okay, then you have the navy. Oh, you've got well, and then if you're gonna if we're gonna go into races, if we're doing Gerudo, you could still do then I mean Helians, Hylians, but you could do um what, oh, I forget their names now. The the kids from the kids from the forest. Isn't it the, the Korok? Koraki. No, Kork- Kori. I again, I'm mispronouncing oh, literally so everything. Embarrassing. Kukiri. But they're always they're always kids, right? Isn't that the thing? Yeah, yeah, they're always kids, but there's something there. I think it'd be fun. I would play. I'm in love with this game, and it doesn't even exist right now. I think I'm into this too. I don't. I would lean towards Zora, mm-hmm. but the thing is that well, actually, the thing is so in. Wind Waker and in Breath of the Wild, the Rito are my least favorite. What? But I think I'd like to be a Rito. See, I think I'd either have to go Zora or Rito. Yeah. Because like land stuff is kind of boring. I want to either be in the sky or in the, in the water. water. You know but what I mean? The thing is in Wind Waker, the Rito, they're like just people with bird faces and their 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 culture's not fully uh you know, like built. Yeah, I think the Rito culture is really well built in Breath of the Wild. And see, that's where I was I introduced. It's beautiful. To them, you know, so yeah. I yeah. It's just that so many of the Rito in Breath of the Wild, or maybe it's just those two main characters, they're kind of like jerks a little but bit. But I've always been a big fan of the jerk. Interesting. Like from Star Fox, Falcon was always my favorite because he, oh, wow. he was just that guy who's like, I don't care, like slight Jersey accent. I love the whole thing about him. Okay. Well, then I might play Rito and then I would play like as a nice one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I also like Zora because I love the rega- regality. Yeah. Like the, just the like. The, There's always a kingdom the, it's, with it's, the Zoras. You know, for the king, for the, you know, I just, I like that, you know, loyalty that they have. Fascinating. And then I wonder if you could get like, no. And the Goron would be the tank, you know. Right. Cool. I mean, I think I'd go Rito and I'd try to just play it my way, though. It'd be like a friendly Rito. All right, let's keep going. That's that's. I like that. Uh, David, if you want to read this next one, I'd be uh, super happy about it. I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. I'm going there right now. So over on the Zelda, favorite Zelda TV commercials, which is the episode that you and I did, the first episode of season three, Rebecca Ow. <laughs> Can, okay. Rebecca A.U., Rebecca O. Ow said... Thank you so much for creating such an incredibly nostalgic Zelda content. You guys are my favorite thing about the morning bus commute. Heart emoji. Are we reading? Well, you're ones? our favorite thing about your morning bus commute. So, <laughs> thank you so much, Rebecca. Love yeah, you. Yeah, that is nice. So what you don't know is you just deleted one. No. Yeah. Did I delete the one that said Dan's so great? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> it's funny. I was like, oh, that's what I was like. You can read it. And then I was like, womp, womp. <laughs> oh, no. There was one that said, there was one in there that was like, Dan, I really like you. You're funny and all that. Oh, boy. Word for word. Dan, we really Dan, like you. Dan, you're really you're funny, funny and I and like you and all that. that. It's great. We'll have to save it for another episode, Dan. Let's bring it. I'm going to bring it around and you won't be able to be here. And it's the and I'll be with some other co-host and be like, Dan, you're so funny. And then it'll just be a moment of silence for our brother in St. Louis. Um, so this next one is from <laughs> Jackson. Um, this is from an, uh, another of one of our favorite Zelda TV commercials. Yeah. Uh, I found a Majora's Mask newspaper ad the other day. It had the moon coming down on New York. Yeah, I believe yeah. it. Yeah, these ads were, they didn't play around. They yeah, the were moon very was coming down like all over. Because what they were trying to do, it, I don't know, man. The Majora's Mask stuff was weird. and. The moon coming down, they were putting it over like major cities yeah. to, to like, I think they were trying to like make a connection of that fear of, the, of yeah. the end of the earth and all that kind of stuff that happens in Majora's Mask. Well, it seems like they were all in on these ads though. They knew Ocarina of Time had killed it. Yeah, you know, like that's true. We, we, were, we were sitting as high as we can be and this is the next game. And so they just threw this ad campaign that was a little in your face. Yeah. You know, if you remember, like there were ads everywhere for this one. Right. And this was like kind of one of those like, what if, like, your city, like, had a giant moon with a face on it coming down? So, <laughs> Eric Toy over on, again, on the episode you did, you and I did, the season one episode of season three, uh, for the Zelda commercials, he says, Eric Toy says, oh, my God, always listen to, oh, yeah. So, this was the first episode that we ever released on our YouTube channel where we had the camera feed be present. Yeah. Usually, it's just, like, video of Breath of the Wild footage or something that I collect. Eric Toy said, oh my God, always listened by podcast. So I guess like on a podcast app, but the YouTube version is a game changer. Boom. Love the opening title sequence and another great podcast. 
Dan is an awesome guest. Hashtag love to Kate. Um, yeah, I take pleasure in creating these intros. I had a lot of fun. Um, I made the first one by hand. I shot my own video of some wood. <laughs> it was like a wood panel. Then the second one, I went to the Garfield Park Conservatory and shot a little bit of video. I will confess, I purchased stock footage of the waterfall for season three. Oh. I did not actually take a drone to a waterfall in the middle of the <laughs> rainforest. But that footage was so appropriate and so cool that I had a lot of fun taking the graphics and mapping the graphics into that space. And I actually was texting you and, mm-hmm. and Gingsley. I remember that, yep. Um, like beta, as I was testing, I was like, okay, here's the next version. I think I'm going to move the text and I'd send them to you. And you'd say, oh, looks good or this or that. That was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's a world where we do video episodes for everybody. But right now, I'm really happy to share that with the yeah, Magical it was- Sword people. Like I said, I think it was kind of needed for that one, though, especially with wanting to you had to watch the commercials. the commercials. Yeah, we wanted you to, we didn't want to just describe the commercials to you and just hear, like, the, the audio. Like, right. so, the visu- or visuals on these were... It's like, if you're in the car driving, fine, you just get the audio, but if you're inclined, yeah. you can go over to YouTube. So, Paul Atk, again, Mr. Paul, over here for favorite Zelda TV commercials, he says... Let's make hashtag OK Bye a rallying cry for this show, shall we? Hashtag (laughs) OKBYE. Paul, I'm into it. I'm fine with it. Love to Kate. I'm going to take that. Let's move on. Um, Joseph Murray over on YouTube for the Evolution of Items episode. It was a season three, episode two. This is the one I did with Alyssa. Um, Joseph said, (laughs) oh, yeah. Well, this is so this episode posted by the time some of the coronavirus stuff was heading up. He said, wants to do meetups? Coronavirus. Coronavirus colon. Maybe in season five. five. David, you're moving too fast. Well, if I may, Joseph, the idea of the meetups was something that happened pre, pre-corona, pre and I can't wait for us to be able to do meetups. Pre-corona. The irony, dun, 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 the irony dun, dun, dun. of building a season where in which it requires a road trip just to have a two-and-a-half-month quarantine put in place <laughs> was... Uh, Timing was, a, was never your It was a real blow to the gut. It was. But we're doing we're doing what we can, and I really do enjoy still being able to talk to the rest of our community and have these conversations about Zelda. Absolutely. Where are we going next, Dan? Um, so I think. This- yep, deleting that one. Sorry, that was a that was a duplicate. Jordan Dar- Daringer. Why don't we go there? Yeah, Evolution Jordan, of items uh, with Alyssa. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, this is from another one of the uh, comments from Evolution of Items. Uh, and he wrote, speaking to the bomb mask in Majora's Mask, if you raise your shield before you detonate it, you won't take damage. I never knew this. That's amazing. So we talk, there's, a, there's, a, you know, there's a bunch of crazy masks that you can wear in Majora's Mask. There's a mask. bomb mask? There's a mask you put on, and uh, when you push the action button, it blows up on your face. Oh. Yes. Do you, and you take damage? You take damage. This is the dumbest mask I've ever heard of. <laughs> like, what's the difference between just duct taping a bomb to your face at this point? It's not a it's, mask if it's an actual bomb. It's not that different. It does also blow up walls and things that you does stand... It, does if it you, look like a bomb? If you put the bomb mask on, uh, kind of. I think it's more of like a, a, a plate in front of you. If you put the bomb mask on and you push your face up against a wall and you detonate it, you will blow up the, the wall piece, but you also take damage. But apparently... Unbeknownst to me, ever Jordan here says that if you raise your sh- your shield, which also makes sense if you just think about it, you pay, put your shield up, it won't hurt you. Oh well, there we go. Didn't know that. Pro tip. Pro tip. Um, top ten non canonical appearances by Link. Our episode that I just did with um, with Shane over up in Mequon. Mekon- I'm not even gonna try and pronounce it. Mekagigo. So I'm gonna let you do this whole thing by yourself. Over by two rivers. Sure. <laughs> uh, this is from uh, Stars Roof. Stars Roof underscore. He says, uh, I, oh yeah, sorry, please. I get so happy when I see a new video from you guys. Thank you so much, Stars. We get so happy when we get to put a new video out. That's a short and simple one. Always a pleasure. Moving along. Let's see. I think we have we have four left, Dan. We can do it. Another top 10 non-canonical. Uh, Dolan McNabb said, absolutely love when you guys feature musical artists. Makes the show feel... A little bit more like a radio show, hey, complete hey. with music breaks. Keep up the great work. Purple heart emoji. So Dolan's speaking to uh, the fact that um, Shane, who was on this, this episode of um, Top 10 Non-Canonical Appearances by Link. It's a long one. It's a mouthful. I love it. Um, he said, hey, I'm, I've been kickstarting this band called Master Sword, and they have their second album coming out, and they're a heavy metal band. They do songs about Zelda. Oh, very Some cool. of them are like, they'll kind of take the Zelda melodies, and they write their own lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, can we... 
play one of their songs or feature them a little bit in the episode. And I said, well, sure, let's put a let's put a 30 seconds of one of their songs in our break. And we did that. But was actually what was kind of fun about that was um, Master Sword was also playing at a, a music festival, a video game music festival up yeah, in Minneapolis. Was. It was the same music festival that I was hoping to meet up with, 8-Bit Music Theory. Mm-hmm. Okay. That fell through. We weren't able to go. Um, but Master Sword was there And they were tweeting with us. I was asking them, hey, can we play one of your songs? While we were there, our friends at GoCast, which is a a video game outsider, a gaming outsider, pardon me, a gaming outsider, who we've had on the show a few times. And Scott, Scott, uh, who runs that show, had me on his blah, blah, blah. It's a whole web. It's a whole web. He was at... The uh, the uh, VGM con up in Minneapolis, this this music video game con. While he's there, Master Master Sword plays. He apparently walks up to them and says, "Hey, there's this show called Another Zelda Podcast. Um, you should talk to them. You guys are cool. We're friends with them." And Master Sword said, "Like, yeah, I think we're tweeting Literally, with them right we're now. We're tweeting at them about right being now. On their show. Oh, that's so crazy! It was this wacky, 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 wacky web." How everything's and, and connected. Some of those seeds were started by Shane even speaking to me about Master Sword in the first place. So, Dolan, thank you. I like the idea of doing the music breaks. I think whenever we do find one and it's appropriate, I'll, I'll throw one in the middle. Yeah. I think it's great. Uh, your uh, budding rapping career is starting to really take off. So I think maybe we could put one of your tracks. My rapping career? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't told them? I did not tell them oh, about my okay. rapping career. Well, we're career. keeping it on the download right now, but... David, uh, everyone, Loki is a freestyle rapper. And I don't want to put him on the spot right now, but you guys should hear him. He, he spits straight fire. It's true. I have some stage fright right now, but you should check out my new single called Dan's Bit that I don't want to be a part of. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's, it's, it's going to be hitting Spotify in one week. It's not his greatest week. one, but it's, 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 <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll never forget it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dolan. All right, here we go. Final stretch. Top 10 <laughs> non-canonical. Bit, I don't want to be a part of it. <laughs> It's a popular track, it's man. Good one, yeah. It's searchable. The thing it's, is, it's, it's searchable. Yeah. Just go straight to Google. You'll, it's going to be the top one easily. <laughs> Why don't you say what? Oh, Stars Roof underscore Stars Roof, again. Yeah, yeah. Chiming in. Uh, I know you've been told this a uh, thousand times, but I think it's a nice thing to mention again. You guys helped me through uh, rough times. Only imagining how humbling and full of gratitude it may be for you to hear stuff like this makes me very happy. Thank you so much. <sighs> this is this sentiment. We do get it from time to time. Oh, yeah. And I just adore it. I just, oh, yeah. I just love hearing this because I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, sometimes I don't. The first couple times that we had a listener say something like this to us, I mean, it happened back in season one. Yeah, it was a little overwhelming because, again, like I said earlier, it was Kate and I getting together at a table just to talk about Zelda stuff on a show, but. This idea that people can go into the backlog, this idea that people are listening to season one while we're making season three and it's something to listen to. And if they feel like, I don't know if we're helping people distract a little bit or if we're helping them focus on other things or if we're just helping them feel like they're part of something. We're doing it all by accident. Yeah. And to hear that that's doing that for some people yeah. is, um, you know, it's it's not, how do I say this? It's not the goal. It's not the mission. It's an accident. It's the best thing. Yeah. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, without a doubt. Like, it's the same way that when you just hang out with friends to play a video game together, that's just what it's about then yeah. in that moment. It's just about sharing those things and talking about those things. Absolutely. And so Stars Roof underscore and and all the other listeners that have kind of kind of reached out to us in this way, they said, maybe it's just like, I got through a hard time or mm-hmm. I got through, there was one, we had one listener um, that got in touch with us last season that said that uh, if I remember correctly, his dad was sick in the hospital Oof. and they um, started listening to some episodes and they started playing one of the Zelda games. It was completely completely humbling the entire experience and so stars roof underscore we always love hearing about this because it's very touching it's very touching very cool for sure let's see um dan uh let's see over on a silent protagonist which was oh my gosh silent protagonist that was an episode I did with Mr. T.C. DeWitt. He there we was, go. He was the guest in from Studio Demands It, another 6-5 show. And uh, the AJ Channel, the AJ Channel is the s- screen name here. Not what did, A, the right. AJ Channel. Well, because it'd be strange if it was AAJ Channel. Yeah, because then there's numerous, but this is the. Right. And also it's a bit of a tongue twister, AAJ. 
See? <laughs> yeah, I get like I didn't even want to say it. I thought about it. My brain kind of got <laughs> locked up. What did what did the AJ channel have to say here, Dan? Uh, the AJ channel said, "This is a brilliant podcast. All your hosts are very well informed about the topic at hand. Nice job. Cool, cool. I'll take it. I'll take it. I like that we have. You know, now we do have all these different co-hosts. You know, uh, coming in to join <laughs> the party. I like it. The always well informed, and I think I've mispronounced almost every single Zelda character." <laughs> And not known the names of any of them the entire time. You know, Dan, here's the thing. It means there's many ways to be a Zelda fan. There are there are the people that have played every single game 500 times over. That's obviously an exaggeration. There's the people who've played a single game and don't know anything about the lore and everything in between. And when I first met you a year ago and we would talk about Zelda, you had played Ocarina. You'd kind of played a few other games. Mm-hmm. You were tremendously curious oh, about yeah. Breath of the Wild. But therein... That was it. Is your fandom. Yeah. That's what it is. And now we have these conversations. Just like when Kate and I started the show, I had played maybe 75% of the library, 25% not. Kate was at about 50% of the library. As we did more review episodes, and and we would say every word wrong and all the different characters yeah. wrong, and you slowly learn, and we're like learning along with everybody else, we will get friendly feedback about like, actually, you said this, but it's not. like I, I famously infamously actually always said termania instead of termina for like a full season when i was talking about majora's mask and you just go with it you just got to go with it i would say the one thing that has always made me know that at some point i needed to get into the zelda fandom is the utter passion and love that you guys have always had for this universe um i mean you can see people and i think i've even spoken to this before you can see people walking around with zelda tattoos like People are all in. Like this yeah. is something that triggers the happiest strings in their hearts, and they just want to play that as loud as possible, you know. And I love seeing stuff like that, you know. So I agree. I agree. I, I don't know exactly what it is. I think there's a little bit of that idea. I don't want to dissect it too much, but the fact that you know TC and we just did the we just did a comment about the episode a silent protagonist, mm-hmm. and in that episode TC Dewitt, who's a screenwriter in California, he and I dissected how do you tell a story when your main character doesn't talk, mm-hmm. and just as a little disclaimer, we all know that Link in universe does talk a bit, but um, narratively or presentationally we never hear Link's voice say anything. Yeah. And that's for a very specific reason. That is so that any player, male or female playing, feels that they are Link, or, yeah. or, or more importantly, feels like they are themselves in the game. And when you play a Mario game, and Mario's going, wahoo, wahoo, babe, I almost got it, here we go. That's great. But you That was an amazing impression, by the way. You're not like, you're, you are not Mario, you're yeah. playing as Mario. Yeah. And we all know Link is a character, but when people play Zelda games, they are they go they inject themselves into that yeah. universe for that very specific and simple reason that link doesn't talk and i think that's where some of that comes from that's why someone wants to put if you know if, if someone puts a zelda tattoo on their arm i think they're doing it for them mm-hmm. and and that's it they're, i don't know if they're doing it for anybody else oh no you know what i mean yeah you know I don't know. You, if you put a Mario, I know I don't want to compare it to like a, a one-up mushroom because that's kind of that's super cool too. But when you identify with the Mario universe, of which I'm a big fan, mm-hmm. you're identifying with that universe. You're identifying with your experience playing those games. It's almost a little bit more meta. Yeah, it's more like, oh, I remember playing this game with my friends, and that's a fun thing. That's what we do. And Mario and his friends are just vehicles. Yeah. But with with Zelda games, it's kind of like you remember them as your own experiences. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Anyways. So we have a final one here. Uh, Ten favorite boss battles. Stars Roof, Stars Roof is killing it over on YouTube. Stars Roof underscore uh, made a comment here for um, ten favorite boss battles. That was a really fun episode, actually. It was our only 11th episode ever back in season one. And he said, Bongo Bongo is the best boss of all. The Legend of Zelda history, in my opinion. The look, the fight, the name, the temple, the sound design. I mean, you can hear bongos all in the temple's theme. How cool is that? As if he is waiting for you and you can hear him since you entered the temple. If that isn't creepy, as as, as expletive and super clever, I don't know what is. Um, do was, you remember Bongo Bongo? He's in the, the spirit temple. Eyeball? With the hands. Yeah. The big hands like, and you're on the drum. You had to like run from one from the other? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, it is a lot of fun. You get the hover boots so mm-hmm. that when he slaps the drum, you can hover and not bounce there like it is. crazy. Yep, yep, yep. And you're and it's Kate and I spoke about this a little bit. Bongo Bongo seems a little bit odd 
as a an aesthetic choice, this these sentient hands that are hitting a drum in like a super creepy spirit temple. Yeah. But maybe. when you think about it, you know, there's in their spirit hands, their Maybe it's one of the hands from the bad guy from Super Smash Brothers. They're not corporal. They it probably is. Mm-hmm. It Just probably to say, is. you know. And one of them um, got a day job and the and, other and one stars roof stayed on villainy, you know. <laughs> Just jumped ship and was like, ah, got another gig. I'm gonna go fight all the characters. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I think you're right. I think you're onto something. Um yeah, I don't know. Nintendo does have a love affair with massive hands that mm-hmm. float around. I don't know why. Um, but Bongo Bongo, yeah, it's true. As you play the temple, the drums fade in and out and slowly get louder. And you as, don't know why. As you get closer to the boss? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's very neat. Was there a, a ship, a pirate ship in that part? I'm the like, spirit, I'm getting weird kind of... No, there's definitely a ship that you you activate and it goes through a yeah, moat. Yeah, it goes through a little... Okay, yep, yep, yep okay. Yep. The bell dings and there's a little bit of fight. as it, mm-hmm. you, Some characters drop down and you fight them as it moves forward. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, Bongo Bongo, very good indeed. Thank you very much, Stars Roof. So that's where we're going to end our listener feedback right now, Dan. Okay. And well, this was a blast. I had a great time during this whole. These are cool episodes, aren't these they? Are. I enjoy them. I remember even with Kate, we 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 did it. There's a little bit of a, the tone's a little different. Mm-hmm. You're kind of like it's a little quicker. We're mm-hmm. kind of hitting the next thing, hitting the next thing, hitting the next thing. Whereas sometimes when it's a a favorites episode, we we the the pace slows down a little mm-hmm. bit. You talk about things, but it's fun to kind of like you can go a little bit more in depth to things instead of yeah. Moving on to the next one. Moving on to the next one is the exact point for an episode like this, and it was a pleasure. Thank you for sharing that with me, Dan. Not a problem. Hey, I'm glad to be part of this. Um, let's see here. Uh, if people want to find you on Twitter or Instagram, I think they can't. They can't. Nope. I am. I'm actually thinking about starting um a Facebook up again. If you oh you don't even have Facebook? No. If you start a show, we might have to yeah, get you at least yeah, start an Instagram thing, or something. I was always thinking about that. Um, but I'm thinking about just burning the bridge, starting a brand new one. Yeah, maybe. Um, and just kind of meeting some of you guys and seeing if you guys want to kind of want to meet, meet up and meet, do those things. You know? I know. I will confess that the majority of my Facebook posts are just posts for the podcast. For AZP. I very rarely am posting personal things. And even Twitter, I have to force myself to post personal things. Usually I'm just sharing episodes, I got to be honest. Quite frankly, most of my social media activity is actually 6-5 stuff mm-hmm. with the Instagrams and the Twitters and all of that and the Facebooks. Mine would just be like out. nonstop pictures of my dog. Like I'm definitely like one of those dog people. I mean, you could do that. That's what Kate did. Her Instagram handle is I only take cat pics. I should, I'll do I only take Rufus pics, which is go. my dog's name. There you go. That could work. That could work. In, in honor of OK okay bye okay hashtag okay bye hashtag love to cater whatever it was absolutely there was a few of them in there all of the hashtags all right dan i don't know what we're recording next i think we have to pick you and i like yes. the next time you and i record something sure sure um i think we should very quickly pick uh, i want to do a review episode with you absolutely i want to talk up i want to talk we've done like these kind of periphery episodes so far i want to do like a game okay with you a deep dive into one, one specific game, game. Maybe it's Majora's Mask. Maybe it's Skyward Sword. I wouldn't be against Skyward Sword. It, it seems to be the most controversial. Like, and not controversial. I mean, both, like, both of those are pretty up there. I really, I thought everyone liked Twilight Princess. I mean, no, generally. I said Majora's Mask. Oh, Majora's Mask. Yeah. Oh, that one wasn't liked? <laughs> really? Oh. Um, um, Majora's Mask. You know, hey, hey, remember the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time? Unfortunately. That's Majora's Mask. Okay, well then we'll do Skyward Sword. <laughs> like, well that was easy. That was a decision very easily IG made. Anuma, who um, famously designed the water dungeon for Ocarina of Time, along with a couple of the other dungeons. One. Yeah, he was given the reins to make Majora's Mask. So all of Majora's Mask, it all happens in three days. Everything's a massive puzzle. It's one big water dungeon. Cool. It's maybe Skyward Sword for you. Yeah, then. let's try that one first. Yep, that, <laughs> let's do that one. And so again, like I said, I can always blame. No, the I mean, remotes. I kind of love Majora's Mask. It's that kind of. It's a different game. Yeah, it's a different game. I love it. I think it's very artful. I think there's a lot of. It uh, seems fun. Like it doesn't seem to, but also seems kind of creepy at the same time. It like, is. It is creepy, and it deals with death and mourning a lot okay. because oh, all all wow. the characters know they're gonna die in three days. Spoiler alert, but oh, okay. well, that's what they think. I mean, the spoiler alert is maybe that you actually save the day and they don't die, but they all accept it, that the moon is crashing down and they will well, not finish their lives without any spoiler. Like, and I know little bits of information, the like you constantly restart though, right? Like, the moon crashes and then you go back and you have to redo kind of something. There's a like three a, day, there's like, three days, it's very Groundhog Day ish. Okay. There's three days, um, all 
200 NPCs that are in that game or whatever it is, 50 that actually have like really important things to do, have a three-day path and you can interrupt it or not and have them do different things. So, you know, honestly, Dan, if I may... actually pretty interesting. Yes, I love it. So now that I say this, the whole point that you were saying, like, I want to talk to Marin or Malin Mm -hmm. and have it change... Majora's Mask is that game, Ooh, but okay. it's a puzzle version of that game. So it's like if you talk to this Goron, they may go to a shop at two o'clock on Tuesday. But if you talk to him and give him a glass of milk, they may not go to that shop. And then on on the next day, on the third day, they actually find that they're actually in a farm somewhere because their path can change completely because of wow. a decision that you help them make. Conceptually, I'm in love with the idea of this game. Yes, right. So that's why that's why it's so controversial is because sometimes it's like the coolest thing in the world and sometimes it's the water dungeon and you're like honestly how do i do this well thank god for the internet yeah there's so. a little bit of that so <laughs> and we'll, i guess we'll 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 toss this around a little bit i'm not against giving you my skyward sword skyward sword disc and we go that route first maybe we take it easy and we do a little something that's a little bit more straightforward well whatever one you have two of so we can play them together i have two of both well, there it is of course you do <laughs> we'll figure it out we'll figure it out I can't wait thank you everybody for listening and uh, the next episode will be the next episode I hope everyone's being safe and I hope everyone's staying safe I hope everyone has a has a has not found too much tragedy in this time I truly wish the best to everyone Dan thank you for staying six feet away from me at all times and I uh, can't wait to, to have you on the next episode whatever right. that is can't wait for it all right cool all right <laughs> Later, everybody. Dan? Yes. I'll see you on that one. You got to do it. Uh, oh, uh, can I do it now? Yes, indeed. Ready? Okay, bye. There it is. There it is.